Sure. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here's that time. I might have got a good batch of sparks done moved up. <laughs> yes. He did have it? Okay. Wow. I didn't I knew they was gonna have it. Okay. Yes, judgment journey. Around the corner. Yes, sir. Sir? Oh, I know it. Make enough noise, maybe, to crawl on all. Huh? Oh, no. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the day you give us. And uh, do again right now, Lord, as we pause to pray for Terry. You know what's going on. And Lord, right now as we come into your word, I pray that you would help us to learn something this morning. Lord, we need to have a teachable spirit. Lord, it's a dangerous place when we come to the place in our walk with you that, Lord, we sometimes... Don't want to hear what you have to say, but right now, Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. Touch those that will be traveling today, God, who are uh, all over the place on vacation and doing different things. And, Lord, I pray that those that are on vacation, God, you'd give them some rest and relaxation, a good time. And, Lord, just bring them home safe. And we pray right now, Lord, that you'd open up your word to us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, this morning we're going to do something a little different. Um, I was going to try to get my, I did try for about 15 minutes to get my phone up on the screen, but it is what it is. I just cut them off, but I, I'm going to show you some things, and I just had to hold my phone up this morning. So uh, not really in the scriptures, but show you a couple of things that's helped me in my Bible study. And if I had any kind of lesson this morning, it'd just be Bible study help. And uh we're going to look at a, a couple of things. You know, we, we emphasize all the time, you know, about studying the Bible. I mean, you hear it all the time. And, but until you do something on your own and learn how, there's a method to everything. Now, I'll be the first to tell you I hadn't figured it all out. <laughs> I just kind of, you know, even doing a trade or whatever you do, you, you kind of learn how to do things your way and uh, what works for you. And that's what we're going to try to figure out this morning on some things. And we emphasize all the time about studying. So why don't we continue to emphasize the importance of a Christian to study the Bible? Well, the simple fact is, and I underscore this here, if... We desire to know God more. This book right here is the only way. This is God's breathe. This is God's breathe word. This is the breath of God, period. I mean, God, you know, the reason you're hearing me now is because God gave you ears to hear. <laughs> I mean, physically. Uh, and also God can give us spiritual ears to hear. The reason you're seeing right now, because God's blessed us with sight, there's a lot of blind folks all over the world. Think about that. And, of course, in the same sense, we was blind spiritually before we knew him. The Bible didn't make sense to us. And there's a development that has to take place within us that all people are the same way. And so this word is God's breath to us. You know, there's some scriptures it talks about, and we'll be in Psalms 86 this morning. If you want to turn there or turn on your phone there, we're going to look at a few things in a little while. But uh, it's God's breathed word. So 
If we continue to struggle in our faith, it may be because we've never came up with a system to study our Bible that fits us. So I think that's the number one help that uh, maybe we can lay out this morning on Bible study help. You know, and I say it all the time, but the truth of the matter is, I am as close to God as I want to be. Well, you say, well, what about my, I'm not that uh, intelligent. I don't have the intelligence to know more, you know, and I'm just at this level, and I'll always be there. And if you listen to those lies, you will all the time. The devil wants to tell you that. The devil wants to say, yeah, I don't, you won't never quote scripture like that. You'll be amazed if you'll hide that word in your heart how much will come out. You don't have no trouble. Well, you may have trouble, but you learn it. You know, especially if you change an address, you learn that address pretty quick. If you change phone numbers, you learn it pretty quick. I've had the same phone number since 1997, so I don't want to change it. <laughs> uh, you know, but, I mean, if I had to, uh, I would, but, you know, it's the same number. We change things. We change bank account numbers. And it, I'd advise you to learn your bank account numbers. So when you get some kind of text that comes up, uh, we had one a few weeks ago or a few months ago where I thought it was her card that got hit, but it was my card. I got the text. If I'd had any sense, I would have known. She would have got the text if it had been her card. So, you know, I, t I text her and I said, is your card, what's your card number? You know, they're compromised. It was mine. Somebody was trying to buy some stuff in Texas. And I'm like, <laughs> you dummy, that's you. You ought to learn that. So I, I, I made myself learn, you know, your driver's license number. People ask you when you're talking to somebody that needs it, what's your last four digits of your Social Security number? Why don't we do God's Word the same way? We have to develop some things. We have to, there's all systems. When I learn names, I have to, put faces with names. And I, I got some crazy ways of trying to remember names. I mean, some off the wall. reason I call John Wayne Grantham John Wayne, so I can remember his first name is Wayne. Because y'all up here hear me, who is John Wayne? Yeah, I, and I just say it all the time. I socialize. I put myself in the place of something and tie it together. There's a there's a name about that uh, that's called that, but I can't pronounce it. And I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Amen, so we won't do it. But we continue to emphasize that it's our duty as a Christian to study the Bible. If we desire to know God more, this book's the only way. The second point, we are creatures of habit. And that's just a fact. That's a period. We're creatures of habit. We repeat the same things over and over on a daily basis. I mean, all the time we, we doing the same thing over and over. We have routines. We, we shower the same way. We repeat the same process all the time. We go in, it's, it's routine to us. We go in in the morning or at night, whenever you take a bath, you go in, the first thing you do is you cut the hot water on a certain place, you know, and then you sit there and wait on the temperature to get just right. You got your towel hanging up somewhere. You get your washcloth. Same for, and, and you know what? You'll catch yourself, if you pay attention, bathing the same way. You just do it. You start and you go through the same process every day. And so, see how, the, how it relates to everything? We're creatures of habit. We repeat things the same way every day of our lives. We brush our teeth the same way. We, we can almost, if you'll pay attention, uh, you'll almost uh, brush them the same amount. You'll stay some side, sometimes on this side longer and not on this side and the front and According to your gums, I guess, you know how they change over time. But we're creatures of habit. We do the same way, the same routine. It's repeated over and over. Just as when we go to the 
And when we take a bath in the morning or whatever, and then brush our teeth, and we'll go to the kitchen and make coffee or go to the refrigerator, do whatever, we do it over and over. We lay, maybe lay our clothes out at night. I do that a lot so I don't wake her up so early in the morning. I lay out my clothes, and it's just a habit. We do it over and over and over. And so just as we do those kind of things, we repeat that process every morning, over and over. If we'll add, listen to me now, if we'll add to our morning routine time for Bible reading, it may take six months to a year to develop the, quote, habit of daily spending time with God to hear from Him, but it can happen. It, it, it'd take that long. It took me that long. Now, perfect? Heck no. Well, ain't nobody perfect. Is there some days, and I, there's some things we're going to look at in a moment that'll help us on studying our Bible. But, and yes, we got to set the clock up a little bit if we're going to do things like that. But it's got to become a daily part of us. What we, we talk about how much we love the Lord and we're thankful for God for what He's done and, and how He's blessed us and He has beyond measure. But if we don't spend no time with Him, then we're robbing ourselves. We can get so involved that, yeah, listen, the Word of God, God's breath to us, can simply sit over on the sidelines and we'll replace it with songs, listen to sermons on the phone or the radio or different things. That's all good. That's part of the development. But we need to develop the routine in the morning of spending time with the Lord. So it will take probably six months to a year to develop and I don't use the word loosely, but a habit of daily spending time with God to hear from Him. It can happen, and it needs to happen. And you know the good thing about it? God desires for it to happen. Ain't that something? See, He don't sleep or slumber. He don't, you don't have to worry about that. He's not, a, he's not asleep. He's sitting there waiting on us to spend time with Him every day you say well how can god hear me in the morning and be with somebody that's being rushed to the hospital or i mean you could go on and on uh, what about the person who's you know having a car accident now or how about the the person that's being raped right now i mean that stuff's happening right now but god can hear all of us at the same time now, we could fill many of illustrations like it, but God desires to hear from us. He has the capability and the desire to hear from us on a daily basis. So we must develop habits. If you don't think you're a creature of habit, you just need to pay attention a little bit. We're all creatures of habit. Those of us who hunt deer, what a deer. They're creatures of habit, ain't they, Randy? They, uh, well, they, they saw us. Now, they got sense enough to know you've been out of their bedroom for 10 months or eight months, and then all of a sudden it starts getting cooler and the woods start, these humans approach. They ain't dumb. The young ones are. But the old ones have been through the process. They use their senses. They do different things. But they are creatures of habit till a certain time of the year, and then they just go crazy. But we won't go there. The third thing is we need to use some technology to help us develop a habit of spending time with God. Now, I told you I tried to get this up on the uh, screen this morning, but, you know, it just didn't happen. It's all good, so I'm just going to have to hold my phone up and let you see a few things this morning. Now, if anybody in here fought technology, it's me, and I'm still fighting it. I still don't go on the same trends as everybody. I have uh, been, I, I still don't have a Facebook account, but I have been doing some uh, Twitter. I don't know if I know how to tweet yet, but I've been looking at things, and I follow people like Brad Thompson and Cody Zorn and Joe Arthur and uh, some of our missionaries that's all, all over the planet. I follow them, and, you know, so I get that kind of stuff to my my inbox and Dave Ramsey and different things like that. 
And so I, I, starting to use some technology a little bit, and I'm not the one to sit up here and, and explain to you all that stuff because I still don't know it. I'm still a babe in that area. But what has helped me in developing a habit of spending time with God is technology. Now, I, I wish I could have got this displaying this morning, but I got my own quirks and all that. See, you got to learn how to do it yourself. I mean, you got to learn what works for you. But I, I got me a little thing here I call God apps. <laughs> I, I put them all together. And I got the Uversion app, and that helps me right there. They have different plans on this. And if you're going here like right now, I'm going through uh, Psalms and Proverbs, and it'll give you your streaks. That's, that's how many days in a row and how many perfect weeks you've had. And, you know, right now I'm on the Psalms and Proverbs, and it's 372 days. And right now, I, there was a couple times I missed some things, but right now I've been 126 days in a row and 22-plus weeks without missing. So I, I go to plans here, and... Uh, I've completed 25 different plans. This goes back to 2013. This is helping develop. I'm not puffing me up. I'm telling you this stuff will help you. And I by far don't spend enough time in the Word of God, but this helps you develop. This is using technology to help us develop different things. And, and so in this Psalms and Proverbs, I think it's 300 and, what is it, uh, 372 days, so that's a little over a year. And uh, you'll read through Proverbs, of course, one chapter a day. You'll read through that uh, 30, 12 times. And you'll read through Psalms two and a half times. That's just one plan. And then uh, one that we had on there that, that I'd done was reading through the Bible in a year. Well, I finished that in 34 weeks. I mean, it just you get... You get into it, man. You get into the Word of God. And I know people's got their, their, their paper edition. I love it. But if I use this thing as much as I did this, my pages would show sure enough be tore out of it. I mean, it's, it's old and falling apart anyway. <laughs> but there is a place for that, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But different things you can do. So you can go on there and, and do you all kind of, Plans. I mean, principles of finances, and you know, I got one on debt that I done the five low languages, and you can do it with your spouse. I mean, there's a bunch of different things you can do, and you can set a timer on here, and it'll let you know, you know, okay, if you hadn't done it by 9:30 at night, you're gonna get an alert. You know, continue. Let's let's pump each other. You can also do it. You know, with your spouse or ladies do it with ladies and men do it with men where you uh, help each other along. You all see your progress. Now, I just do it myself because I'm just personal that way, but it's helped. I mean, so that's kind of something you can do. And then uh, what will help is go and do the... Now, I got the Blue Letter Bible because I have an iPhone, but if you got an Android, uh, you can do my sword for Android and do the same thing. We're going to see how to use that in just a moment. But that helps you to spend time with God on a daily basis. You will find yourself slowly. Now, we're creatures of habit. It takes a while. to We, we get up at the, you know, if we have a routine, and we do. <laughs> I don't care if you got a job or you retired or what it is. You have a routine. And so it's amazing when we, like, we got up and went and seen uh, Leslie and them the other Saturday. Well, I hadn't seen her in a couple of months, which I'm up early in the morning anyway, but I found out I didn't have a hard time getting Lisa and, and Lindsay up to leave the house at 6.30 on a Saturday morning. They was up and ready to go. Anticipation. Why don't we do God that way? We can. And, and as we grow and spend more time with him, we learn, so we got to develop. So use some kind of technology. So then the fourth thing you'll find, after you've taken time to be with God in His Word, next thing you know, a passage of Scripture is going to just jump out at you. Write what you need for that day. 
right what you've been dealing with maybe the night before you went to sleep or even better what you might find yourself dealing with that day that happens all the time and it's amazing how many times I've, I, the Lord has just popped something out and next thing I know that day somewhere I've had to, had to share that or I've had to share it with myself <laughs> especially dealing with the tempers Nobody in here has got a temper, I know, but for those that, that have to deal with it, then you deal with people, it can come up. So we've got to hide that word there. And then next thing we know, a scripture speaks directly to our heart. Then at that time, we can go deeper. And you know what? That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to go deeper and deeper. And we've got to develop that time together. Then, so now what do we do when we... Uh, when we continue to emphasize about Bible study, we realize we're creatures of habit, and we start using some technology if that's what you want to do. Maybe you disciplined enough to get up every morning and open this word. Well, I found myself bouncing at different times of the day until I started developing this using the technology. But either whatever works for you, it doesn't matter. Get your time in the Word of God. So after you've taken some time and then God speaks to you and a scripture jumps out, now what do you do? You take it to the next level. Uh, folks, I mean, I'll be honest with you. This is how God comes up with my stuff for Sunday morning because I read it every day and it'll jump out. And what I've learned, if I will spend time with God, God will speak. And when he speaks... I better have one of these handy. You can ask Lisa. I'll be working on something, and these pieces of wood, and she's still got some pieces of trim, a little one by six drop or something, you know, about that long, and I got stuff scribbled all over it because I'm listening to a sermon or something, and, and God will speak, and, man, I'll just stop what I'm doing and write it down and go throw it in the truck. Next thing you know, on Sunday morning, I'm getting my piece of wood back out. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find it. it but whatever works but you can you need to write it down when that happens so what do we do after a scripture jumps out and we go deeper now so we find that scripture and we if we don't write it down i can promise you the devil is going to steal it so now after we found that what do we do so the other day I was reading in Psalms 86 as part of my devotion. And verse 5, I told you we was going to be in there, and we're going to get there. Let's look at verse 5 of Psalms 86. Of course, you can read the whole chapter, name 17 verses if you want to. But verse 5 and verse 15 jumped out at me. It says, For thou, Lord, art good. Man, you, there's something about getting up in the morning whatever time it is to you, and coming across a scripture like it. Because you, you get up and you take time to want to hear from God, and take time to seek God. And then next thing you know, you come across a passage, for Lord thou art good. Man, my mind went to going. I thought, man, how good he is. You look around at what we... Uh, what God has done for us, where we could be. I, there's hardly a time that I pass somebody on the road. We, we did it the other day. This guy was walking down the road, had a tent on his back and a backpack. We went by and I said, that could be me. I go by these uh, bridges where people are sleeping under them up in the, Atlanta. There's plenty around here. It ain't just in Atlanta. There's folks sleeping under bridges in LaGrange. In different abandoned places. we got a ministry. Thank God for them reaching out to these people. But that could be me. That could be you. So when I come across something like it, man, sometimes I had to just put the phone down and say, Whew. Thank you, Lord. You are good. Thank you for that this morning, knowing that you are good. For thou, Lord, art good. And then it says, ready to forgive. And man, I thought, whew. See, sometimes it ain't just reading it and moving on. It's some reflection going on. So then you think about how it was the goodness of God that led you to repentance. 
And then you get to thinking about, man, Lord, you, you, it's almost like you're sitting on the couch and you look over and he says, that's me. <laughs> I'm ready to forgive you. I'm good. That's me. You're kind of, kind of a man thing. I know you women probably don't, you know, but I kind of look over there and I say, man, boy, he's ready to forgive. Then it goes on. He says, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. That's just who God is. And I read the rest of it, and it's good, and I won't spend time to do it this morning. Jump over to verse 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion. And I thought, I thought about Psalms 23. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Of course, you know it right now. You're quoting the rest of it. I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. <laughs> but full of compassion and gracious, and long-suffering, and plenteous and mercy. So now, what do you do? Well, now God has showed a verse to you, or two, and it's jumped out. Then you go back at another time. You better write it down, remember that. And then you go back at another time, and you open it up, just like we're doing here this morning. This happened Thursday or Friday, I can't remember, but it's there. Write it down, go back to it, dig it up. Then we come to, we've used you version now. I, I use you version, excuse me, to get to this point. So we've seen that. Now we go back and open the page, the written word, and we can, I tell you something else. You reading this, and if you've read your Bible enough, you'll see these scriptures, and when you study it, you'll remember what side of the page it's on in your Bible. That's how good God is. That's little to some people. That's elementary to some people. But you know what? It's right there. That's part of hiding it. That's part of studying it. So now we go back. And, of course, I, if you had Android, you can go to my sword for Android because I used that in here for years, but the Blue Letter Bible. So then I pull up Psalms 86, 15. And then I will just click on it. Now, you got to set all this stuff up in your uh, in, when you first set up the Blue Letter Bible, when you do the same thing for my soil for Android. But, you know, I, I mean, you can go to translation comparison if you want to. I don't care. It ain't going to bother me. I'm going to use King James, and I suspect you will. But if you want to go back and just see what the rest of them, if you got somebody quoting one, you don't know who what version they're quoting, you can just go to it. It's, I mean, look at all of them. So, anyhow, <coughs> you can go back here but I go to the concordance alright and then man I tell you some cool things about this alright all right. but thou O Lord and this is verse Psalms 86 15 and if you got it right here right there you can go to this it's Adonai now what comes to mind that song Adonai you know I, Lord knows I can't sing uh I can make that joyful belch, I guess. But anyhow, so you can go right here and you can you can see what the Hebrew word is and you can listen to it if I can get it to play here. <laughs> oh, I got it on Do Not Disturb. Oh. This is how you study the Bible. You know what I used to have? That concordance about that thick. That thing looked like a, like a, something, I'm like a big old family Bible, you know. Yeah. That joke was like it. And so that's how I used to I'd go through there and find that and find that. Now it's right here. What a blessing God has given us. You know what I've done with that thing? I packed it up. I don't need it no more. It was good for its time. Think of the years and hours people spent doing that. And now you can just go right here. I'm telling you, you got to embrace this kind of stuff. All right, but then I go to full of compassion. And so I, it's Hebrews 73, 49. And then it'll tell you right here, you know, it's compassionate. And then you can go and get the strong definition of it, the same thing you used to do there. But then you go right here. Okay, this is used 13 times in 13 verses in the Hebrew. 
All right, so, hey, this is another cool factor. You want to see all the Strong's concordance of that? You can mash it on, and there's all the ones. Now, I used to have his Hebrew Bible, too, Hebrew Study Bible, Hebrew Greek Study Bible. And I'd have to go to it to see all these, you know, because you can just click on any one of them now. So this helps. So I don't, confusion for me, I don't have that on that much. I, I cut it off. But now, 13 times, so Exodus 34, 6. So I take me a scratch pad, and I just used this this morning because I knew I wouldn't have time. So I, I, only 13 times. Now, some of these you use six, 700 times. I ain't writing all them down, I mean. No. Yeah, I ain't even doing that. Right? I get it. At 600 times, I got you, God. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> all right? And so <laughs> he said, you ought to. I spent it, said it enough. But so here, you know, like Exodus 34, 6, Deuteronomy 4, 31, For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, forget, nor forget the covenants which he swear. And you can go on down, and it gives you all the ones that it's there. Hebrews 9, 17. So I, I pin them all down. There's just 13 of them. All right, and then I go back. Y'all got to get pull your own way, but this is, this is exactly how I do it. So then he's gracious and long-suffering and so if i clicked on gracious you, you're gonna like this right here it's used 13 times in the hebrew of course it means gracious then you go down through here and guess what exodus 22 7 and so i start i start pinning that down then the next one it's used that is uh ex ex exodus yeah, i don't say ezekiel Exodus 34, 6. Well, guess what? That's the same one. It's right up there. And then you go down, and I put a little asterisk beside each one that it's used along with this Hebrew word. You say, what's the difference in that? That's how you study the Bible. You study the Greek and the Hebrew. Hebrew for the Old Testament, Greek for the New. It makes the Scripture get deeper in your thoughts and in your minds. And next thing you know, you start understanding more of what the scripture means. And and so I, I go down through there and I, I check all those things. And then I come back right here. I say, okay, in verse 15, and I'm fixing to be done. But like uh, verse 15, it says, and gracious, long-suffering. Of course, we all know what long-suffering means, or do we? Do we know what gracious means? And then we see all those things and we tie it together. Next thing you know, that's how you hear me sometimes get up here and I'll write these things down and then I'll share them with you and then I'll say, well, this is how we can break this verse down. And we're using exactly what it is in the Hebrew in this case. And so those are kind of a few things there this morning that will help you study the Word of God. Again, we're creatures of habit. We're going we're gonna to spend time and do what we want to do, bottom line. And so I hope that God's word will somehow hold a preeminence. You know, that's why Jesus died. Scripture tells us he died, that he may have the preeminence in our life. Preeminence means first place. He said what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto you. Don't worry about it. Seek me. So let's let's try to develop as we grow together, and that's what we're doing. Father, we thank you for your words this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for being here this morning.